Um, <clears throat> it struck me in, in, in thinking about that, that parable of, uh, uh, of the talents that those who actually gave, the ones who responded, the master says, uh, well done. And he also says, uh, uh, welcome, he, he says, um, enter into the joy of your master. So enter into the joy. So if you like service, their service, their giving, their response is a pathway to life. It's a pathway to joy. Because he says, enter into, into the joy. If you, re- if you really want to seek, in a sense, if you think about it that way, the joy of the Lord uh, to give, to respond, to serve, is a pathway to joy. It's a pathway to life. Because, again, it shifts that focus of, of, uh, you know, of ourself, as Joe said, you know, when there's like a sinful self-preservation where it goes beyond you know, the normal self-preservation. But when we start to, to look at the needs of around us and responding God, it is a pathway to joy and life. And, um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, so it's a wonderful parable to, uh, to reflect on. And also, I mean, you read different things about it, but what uh, of how people interpret the parable, but one of the interpretations is that a talent was uh, a weight of go- a talent was a weight of gold or a weight of silver, and a talent uh, it was in today's terms probably worth about uh, six hundred thousand dollars. So it was actually a lot of money. So even the guy who only had one talent actually had a lot to give. He was actually entrusted with a lot. Um, and so that's why, and one of the reasons why there's, the, you know, there's um, the master's upset because he gave him a lot, but he didn't respond. He didn't do anything with it. And the other interesting thing there is that why didn't he do anything? And, 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 and one of the reasons why he didn't do anything is because, and he says this back to the master, I knew you were a hard man. And he actually had a wrong image of God. Because God's not a hard man. He's not a hard man. He's a loving man and he was a generous master who wanted his servant to enter into life, wanted him to enter into joy. And he, he didn't respond because he, he, he was afraid and he said, oh, God is hard and stingy and is... So he, he couldn't give. He misunderstood the heart of the master. He misunderstood the heart of God. And that's part of what Jesus is saying as well. If you capture the heart of God, you will respond as, as, as a servant, as a giver, because that's how God is himself. And God is life and God is joy. Um, so part of preparing, I guess, as well for this time is also to ask the question, and this is very important as well, it's not just what we do, but it's also how we do it. And this is very important because in our world, we're very good at generally at the what questions. We're not so good at the how questions. So if you go to a social function or Something like that. When you meet people, you, before too long, normally say, what do you do? So we might meet someone and, and say, what, what do you do for a living? Uh, and, and they'll say, well, I'm the, you know, CEO of, uh, of Mars Confectionery Company or something like that. We ask what questions pretty much up front. We don't o- often ask how questions. We don't normally ask the same person, how do you treat your wife and your family during the week? We don't probably ask that question. We'll ask the what's, but not the how's. And it's important to think about uh, the how, how we do our service. Because, uh, and, and, you know, <laughs> ask you this question, why are we called servants of Jesus? Why did God give us that name, servants of Jesus? Which 
I've always thought it's a pretty full-on name, actually, Servants of Jesus. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit sort of confronting, isn't it, when you're out and about and people say, where do you go to church? And you say, oh, I'm, you know, you, you feel like saying, well, I go to the Friends of Jesus or the, you, you know, the, um, the glory of Jesus or something a little sort of more attractive, but to say Servants of Jesus is a very... Um, strong uh, term and where it comes from in our early times of our of our community when uh and joe can correct me if i get this get this wrong but when they were discerning about what we should be called and felt that the, that servants was the uh the name the scripture that god gave was uh second corinthians chapter four from verse seven and it's about how we do what we do, and it's it's very much it's it's from Paul talking to the Corinthians, and Paul is, uh, you know, talking about what he go what he goes through, and just listen, I mean, just quickly. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels to show that the transcendent power belongs to God and not to us. That's what Joe was saying earlier. The talents, the power belongs to God. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. For while we live... We are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. So Paul is saying there to them that all the things he's going through for their sake, he's you know, challenged in all these ways, but so that they can have life. And that's that why, that's the spirit of of, of, of service and the heart of a servant. Now, uh, <clears throat> one word that can sum that up, one of the words you can use, it's not a word used very often these days, is the word grit. Say that with me, grit. 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 Paul was a gritty person. Grit. And uh, grit uh, has a couple of different, uh, different meanings. One is obviously it's the um, small particles of sand or stone that can get in your eye or something like that that's not what uh that's not what we're talking about here but grit also means a a certain resolve it's a character trait and i looked it up just to uh to research this grit a little bit and it and i found this definition that it says perseverance and passion for long-term goals it's a perseverance or passion for a long-term goal, for a bigger picture. It's when people have the bigger picture, they're prepared to stick at it and work at it and persevere because they know that there's a, there's a, a great work that they're involved in. And that's important that we realise that. It's a great work that God has called us to, an important work in our time and in our day. And... God needs gritty people to get the job done. And uh, they did a, uh, some people, you know, who have more time on their hands than I do, research this topic. And they found that um, when they researched uh, famous leaders in history, uh, that they found that one, that the, the, the major character trait that these people had was grit. And it said, while their ability was important, these individuals also possess zeal and a persistence of motive and effort. Individuals high in grit are able to maintain their determination and motivation over long periods, despite experiences with failure and adversity. Their passion and commitment towards a long-term objective is the overriding factor that provides the stamina required to stay the course amid challenges and setbacks. Essentially, the grittier person is focused on winning the marathon, not the sprint. 
So Paul was a gritty person. And when we talk about service, we need to have a bit of grit to keep going. It's not always spectacular. Now, I want to put a, f a picture up on the, um, on the overhead for you. If you can put up, John, there he is. I want to introduce you to this fellow. His, his name is William Hackett. And William Hackett, he's actually called Sapper William Hackett. Hackett. Sapper was, a, in the First World War, it was like a, uh, in the if you're in the Engineer Corps, it was like a private. So it's a lowly rank in the army, but um, they used to call them sappers. And William Hackett was um, a gritty person. And I just want to read you a little bit about his, um, his story. He was born in Nottingham in 1873 and he became a coal miner at the age of 18. And he later moved uh, to South Yorkshire with his wife Alice and their two children. In 1914, when war was declared on Germany, he tried three times to enlist but was considered too old... 41, I think he was, too old and having a weak heart. So they turned him down three times from, uh, from joining up. But by 1915, they were becoming desperate uh, in the, in the, at the front line in France and they were particularly desperate to recruit miners to dig tunnels uh, beneath the enemy lines. And they used to um, dig these tunnels. And they actually used to plant bombs, I think, under, under the surface of, of, uh, of uh, trenches and that and blow things up. But um, and there may have been other reasons why they were digging tunnels, but that was one of them. And so William Hackett uh, signed up. They, they took him in uh, into the Royal Engineers and he was sent to France after a fortnight's training. So... That was enough training. And he used to dig tunnels uh, 40, so, uh, 40 foot below, so whatever, 12, 30 metres under, underground. He dug tunnels and the tunnels were about four foot high and two and a half feet wide. You couldn't stand up in them. You just crawled around in these tunnels about the size of a kitchen cupboard if you think about a kitchen cupboard and crawling along inside your kitchen cupboards if you like that's that was his world that's what he signed up to do um, on the morning of 22nd of june 1916 uh, sapper william hackett and four other miners were tunnel were tunneling uh, towards enemy lines when uh, there was a, an explosion and the and the, uh, at, they were at a depth of 35 feet in this little uh, tunnel and the tunnel collapsed and they were trapped uh, in this tunnel. Uh, and there, there, were, sorry, there were five of them uh, cut off in there. So they began a, a rescue party for them and it took them uh, two days to... Eventually, after two days, they opened up an escape uh, path, an escape like a, 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 like a vertical tunnel that they dug to let them out. And um, three of the men got out to safety uh, as they did that. Um, but one of the men had been injured, a young man by the name of uh, Collins. Thomas Collins was, was seriously injured and um, was down in, in the tunnel, a little bit of another part, not where they'd opened, the, opened up the opening. And uh, Sapper William Hackett refused to leave this 22-year-old 20 year man. Um, he, so he, even though they opened up and he could see the daylight, like you'd imagine after being two, two days in this um, little hole, opened up but he wouldn't go out because he wanted he stayed with this other man um, Collins until he would be rescued and his words were said to be I'm a tunneler I must look after the others first 
So they worked, the rescuers worked for a further four days to try and free this injured man. They had to dig in another place to try and get him out. Um, and it was, uh, it was very dangerous. There was all shelling and fighting going on all around them. And eventually the whole tunnel collapsed and uh, William Hackett and Collins were, were entombed. Um, and both of them are still there today. Their bodies are still uh, there under the fields in, um, in northern France. So Sapper William Hackett died a hero at the age of 43. And eventually he was awarded the Victoria Cross. And he was the only tunneler of, apparently there were 10,000 of these guys, to receive the award. Um, his determination to do his bit for king and country made him the bravest of the brave. He was a man of faith as well, um, which some of his letters reveal. Asked later about her heroic husband, Mrs Hackett said, I could never understand the doctors rejecting him on account of his heart. There wasn't much wrong with that, was there? <laughs> so William Hackett was a little man... And he was a gritty man. He did a job that probably nobody else wanted to do. Uh, but he, he did it. And, um, you know, it cost him his life. But that's a spirit of a servant, a spirit of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of William Hackett. It's a spirit of a servant. 